Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I didn't want too much of anything, honestly. I was just sitting here. I just finished watching the Potomac reunion, part two. I'm not getting worked up. I'm not. I'm not getting worked up. I did get worked up <laughs> when I was watching it. I, 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 and I know I said this this season, but being that one of my girls is leaving and quiet as it's kept, I really don't think Wendy is probably coming back. Um, there's, a, there's a very, 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 very high chance that I won't be tuning in next season. Um, Candace is gone. Wendy, I'm thinking it's probably going to be gone. Um, even if Wendy is not gone, I don't think that it's enough. And I go up for Dr. Wendy, y'all already know. But I don't think it would be enough for me to want to tune in. Yeah, I, I think after watching part two of the reunion, it's, it's, it's almost... It, I think that after watching part two of the reunion, if anyone chooses to watch this show and ignore the clear biases, the intent, the favoritism, the covering up, the protection, the showing that we don't care about certain cast members. I mean, there's really nothing else to discuss. You know, the, the truth is, Whenever we watch these shows, we see what we see. And we can watch the same exact show the exact same time, and we could literally all walk, walk away with a, diff, with a different perspective. I also know that sometimes what we see or what we choose to see can be rooted in how we feel about someone, right? So if I dislike you, then I may only see all of the negative things that you do. If I like you, I may see all the positive things, only the positive things that you do. That's why I think it's important, like whenever, I, whenever I'm having the conversations with y'all, I'm like, girl, just let me know if y'all see something. Because, you know, it's been times where I have watched the show and I don't see it, right? Because I think that's when the bias kicks in. <laughs> you just don't see it. <laughs> and then when somebody calls it out, you're like, oh, that did happen, right? But I've never not seen someone do something and I thought it was a problem and I didn't call it out. I try to, when it comes to my reviews, I really try to be as fair as possible. It's one thing if I don't see something, then I can't call out something I don't see. But if I see it, and especially if I think it's a problem, a favorite or not, if I go up for you or not, girl, it will be addressed. I think I'm very fair. I know I am. <laughs> Girl, this part two, girl, I said, girl, this is a mess. This is a mess. At this point, girl, they just need to shut the show down. And I'm not even saying that because Candace is leaving. I'm saying that the show is a mess. And it is clear as day that production is going to do whatever they can in order to protect Giselle. Whatever they can. Whatever they can do. To protect Giselle, they are going to do it. And whatever they can do to make someone take the heat, they're going to do that. And if that means throwing Wendy and Candace out there, girl, in the middle of, a, of the ocean with no paddle, girl, no water, 
no 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 um vest <laughs> let them figure it out on their own it's crazy it absolutely is crazy <laughs> girl and as much as andy tries to put on and i i tried to tell y'all about andy andy knows he know what he's doing he'll call out stuff because he knows that it needs to be called out but he really doesn't care like whenever he makes comments about oh him being dissatisfied and with the season and him being a fan of the show and they're needing they're needing to be some type of you know accountability right he'll say that because he's 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 on twitter and he sees what a lot of people are saying about accountability and ownership and the show being too divisive and divided right but he really doesn't mean it <laughs> what he means is candace you're gonna take all the accountability and giselle gonna sit over there and just brush her fingers through her hair Wendy, you're going to take up accountability. And girl, they're going to sit on the other couch and they're just going to look at y'all. It's really, what he really meant was Candace and Wendy are going to do all the apologizing and taking accountability while the other women, they don't have to really say anything because you two are the reason why this group is divided. It's not them. <laughs> it's one thing, it is a hot mess. But we're going to talk about it tomorrow. I'm going live. Did I say that I'm going live today or whenever y'all see this? I'm going live April the 8th, Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I wasn't going to go live because, girl, you know I can get along with it, girl. But I did kind of have fun the last live. The last live was three hours, girl. Um, but I did have fun the last live. It's just like, I, I don't mind going live. Of course, y'all know that. It's just something about going live with a review. I think I know what it is because whenever I'm, whenever I'm doing like hot topics or something, I don't know. I just know why. I, maybe, it's, maybe it's in my head. I feel like it's different because like with a review, I'm trying to make sure I hit all of my points. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I'm trying to read the comments and then I'm trying to read the, the super chats. Um... And then at one point I remember saying I just wasn't gonna read, I can't read the comments. Now, if you leave a super chat, I feel like I have to because girl, you spending your money, girl. So I, I, at least I, the least I could do is read your comment. But I think I, I got so caught up in the comments that I started just getting so distracted and responding to the comments instead of just trying to like hit my points on my nose. So that's why I don't like going live. But like I said, I had fun the last time. It was fun, even though it was three hours, but it was fun. And then, plus, I feel like tugging on a couple of wigs tomorrow. <laughs> Not a couple, a lot. Because, Wendy, I'm tugging on yours. Hey, Dr. Wendy, if you watch my videos, girl, you know I love you to pieces, but girl, I do. we got to do a little tuggation on you. Candace, we definitely tug on, tugging on yours. Andy, girl, I'm, I'm, ripping your, I'm, I'm ripping yours off. Production, I'm scalping you. <laughs> girl, hello? Jizzy, yeah, I'm tugging on yours. Robin, I'm definitely gonna tug, tug, tug yours to the to, to the Mia girl. I'm I'm shifting yours too. <laughs> the only two I really ain't got nothing really for is Ashley and Necker. Why are they on the show? It's Ashley and Necker, <laughs> girl. But the other ones, everybody else, <laughs> production, girl, Andy, everybody else, they getting a shift, a pull off, <laughs> or a scalp, <laughs> girl. We yanking it. Either we gonna tug, yank, or scalp. <laughs> it's okay. It's gonna be one of the three. It's gonna be a few wig shifts. It's gonna be a few t t snatching off. It is gonna be a few scalps. Okay. Yeah. This is what we're gonna do. Got to show us a mess, child. Anyways, girl, let's look on. Let's get on. Let's look and see what I got saved up enough. The... Oh, listen to this, <laughs> yo, girl. Um, when me and my sisters go get nails. This was on the shade room a couple of days ago. Cash Doll shows a receipt from her trip to the nail salon with her sisters. And it was $675. The amount was $675. And, oh, $675. $675. Did she leave a tip? Mm, I know she I know she left a tip. <laughs> Maybe she didn't. Anyway, six seventy five not that bad.
That's not that bad. And I heard it was like four or five of them. That's not that bad. Girl, let me tell you something. One thing about it, two things for sure, three things for certain. <laughs> Girl, I didn't realize until I started going to the nail salon. Um, I used to go like back in the day all the time, then I stopped, and then I started back like, uh, like a few years ago. And that's when I really started getting my nails painted and all that stuff. And I never realized how expensive the nail salon can be. Girl. Yeah, I remember back in the ice, be like, girl, these girl, these girls be bragging about their man getting their no, getting their get they uh toes and nails done. Like, girl, do better. <laughs> girl, it wasn't until I started going and I realized, oh. <laughs> girl, I wonder why they bragging a little bit, girl. Going to the nail salon could set you back a couple hundreds. <laughs> For real. Girl, it could set you back about two hundred dollars. Depending you know these girls nowadays, girl, they're going to get rise stuff. <laughs> girl, they get girl. The girls nowadays going to the nail shop, they just not getting no friendships no more. The girls don't do friendships no more. Girl, they going, they getting whole Disney characters painted on their fingernails. Girl, they getting their house painted on their fingernails. They getting their grandmamas painted on their fingernails. They getting their granddaddies painted on their fingernails. Girl, they, the girls is getting whole art, girl, just on their fingernails. Girl, they getting diamonds and rhinestones. And girl, ear piercings. I mean, not ear piercings, but earrings put aside. Girl, it'd be a lot cool. Oh, I'd be like, girl, y'all getting all that done. Girl, for me, just to go, and I, girl, I, girl, I did this myself. <laughs> girl, I went to the to the CVS, got some nail polish. I just do myself myself now. Girl. I mean, do my thing and does myself now because this was too expensive. I really got to be going somewhere for me to go to the nails to, to go to the nail salon. Like if I'm going out of town for like I don't know if I'm going out of town, I go you know get my nails done, toes done. But if I'm just sitting around Houston, ain't going nowhere, girl. I just go <laughs> slap some of this black fingernail polish on my fingers and go on by my business. Girl, the nail salon is expensive. For me, it was, it, depending on which one I went to, like the one in the Galleria, I'm not going back to the one in the Galleria. They're too expensive. I think the last time I went, it was with me and my sister, and I offered to pay for my, I told my sister, we were already at the mall, and I wasn't going to sit there and get my nails done and not get my sister nails done. So I thought I would get pay for her nails, for, pay for her to get her nails and toes done, and I paid like two something. It was like two something, two something, like not like no two hundred. It was two something. I can't remember. But girl, the thing is, my sister didn't even get like no. My, my sister didn't get no sauce in Santana set. That's what they be acting like I be getting. Girl, these my real nails, girl. Why are y'all charging me a hundred dollars to literally throw some black fingernail polish on my fingers and do my feet? That should not be no hundred dollars. Now, sometimes I do get a little white design on my fingers, you know what I'm saying? But even with that being said, girl, how is my stuff $100? And my sister nails, she got she got, she got got like some, what are they, fake nails? Well, not press-ons, but you know. She got her nails. She got some nails. And she didn't even get her nails long because at the time, she was still, um, at the time, I think uh, Bailey was still wearing Pampers. And of course, she was like, I can't be having no long nails and be scratching her. So I, she didn't even get her nails very. She didn't even get her nails long at all. And um, girl, it was like yeah, it was like two something. But the times I went, even before then, girls, different places I would go, it might be like ninety, um, ninety five, eighty five. And I used to be like, girl, that is too much for nails. That is entirely too much. So I said, girl, the girls walking around here. That's why I said, girl, the girls who be bragging about their man paying for their fingers and nails. I see why. And then you know a bitch need a a bitch need a fresh set, girl. If you want to, if you if you trying to be a real real city girl, you probably going to the nail shop every two weeks, girl. You know some of the girls think y'all too good for a refill. I learned about a refill. I think our refills. You know some of the girls think they're too good for a refill. Shout out to y'all. I ain't even mad at it. Okay, because if you spending his money, then I guess it don't matter. But yeah, going to the nail salon is it can be expensive. It really can. It's crazy. And like I said, girl, your nails gonna start going back, so you are gonna have to go back, girl, and get all that get all that right there filled. I think it's called a fill. No, it's called a fill. Is it called a fill or a refill? Again, I get a refill. Shout out to and where's L at? I don't know what happened to her. She upped and disappeared, girl. Um, but yeah, shout out to all the girls and boys who go to the nail salon. I really can't go as much as I used to, you know. You know, after. I, you know, the extra income that I was bringing in. You know, the girls got to, <laughs> you know, the girls got to start cutting back just a little bit. <laughs> Girl, you got to, you got to start learning how to do stuff your damn self. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be teaching myself. I'm gonna be in a restroom trying to teach myself how to get to cut my hair in a little bit. Um, so you know when I lost that extra income, honey, I had to learn. I had to cut back on some stuff and going to the nail salon was just out of the cars. I just couldn't afford to go no more because I'm like, girl, I can't be giving these people. And I was going. I remember one time. I remember one month. I think I went to the nail salon like twice. I gave them like two hundred some dollars. I was like, girl, but I leave a tip too. I was like, uh, uh-uh, girl, I can't do this. This is this is for the birds, baby. This is for the birds, and I ain't got it. Not with my money. Not with not with my buddy. I ain't do it. Show sure ain't. Let's see what else is going on. It ain't been a lot going on at all. Let's see. Oh, listen to this. Okay, so Coach Fowles lawsuit against Gap for selling T-shirts. Let's say Coach. So Coach has initiated a legal battle against Gap Inc., accusing its old Navy division of trademark infringement. The lawsuit has lodged, no, I'm sorry, the lawsuit was lodged in Los Angeles F- Federal Court. And the heart of the dispute is Gap's sale of t shirts emblazing with the word Coach, which, according to Coach it's, uh, and its parent company, Tapestry Inc., was done without permission. Coach argues this act violates trademark laws and poses a significant risk of confusing consumers into believing that Coach had a hand in producing these garments. Given that Coach's brand is synonymous with a unique blend of fashion, craftsmanship, style, and function, primarily through its luxury lifestyle items, the associating with mass market t-shirts is viewed as potentially damaging. The lawsuit states that the irre- irreparable, irreparable harm that Coach believes it has suffered due to, his, uh, due to the unauthorized used, uh, use of its trademark. Additionally, the company's trademarks are not just logos, but symbols of quality and luxury. Girl, anyways, girl, carefully cultivated over decades since the brand's inception in 1941. Girl, <laughs> I can see why somebody on some real stuff, when you look at the shirt, it does look like it does it does look like I would think if I saw this, I would think that it was a coach shirt. Like even down to the font. Maybe it's the font. Because that font does look like look does look like coach. You know, some of the girls think they're too good for coach. <laughs> Didn't Cardi B just come out with a song? Cardi B just came out with a song. You know it's so crazy because back in the day. Back in the day, the black luxury brand for us, for the girls who really didn't have no money, you know, that like long, long money was coach. Girl, this is what the girls don't know, girl. Back in the day, girl, if the girls carried a coach or a Dooney and Burke, see, I'm telling my age. The girls who know, no. Okay. If your mama or grandmama or some girl you knew, whether it was your best friend, cousin, sister, if they carried a coach or a Dooney and Burke, girl, you can tell them girls nothing. Okay. And that was part of the it girls. All the black it girls had a Dooney Burke, had Dooney and Burke or a coach bag. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me in the comment section, am I lying? Girl, I'm telling the dog honest truth. Girl, if you, if your mama had a coach purse, you was or a Dooney and Burke, the girls probably thought y'all had a little bit of money too. <laughs> yes. If you was walking around here with Dooney and Burke, a coach. Now the girls turn their noses up at Coach and Dooney and Burke. At one point, I started turning my nose up, too. And then I realized, girl, I was getting swept in into believing that Coach and Dooney and Burke were no good. But the truth of the matter is, girl, they say Coach is real leather, one, okay? And then I remember I went to my friend's house. Because <laughs> I was like, girl, I was really getting into Coach. Because, you know, they revamped Coach, too, when they brought in. At one point, I think Michael B. Jordan was like, what is it called? You know, like the model, whatever they called. Uh, it had endor- an endorsement deal, whatever. And I think Meg Thee Stallion, I think Ciara, it was a few. And I was like, oh, this is cute. And I wanted me a coach bag. I still want me one. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to give me a coach bag. <laughs> and my friend was like, coach. <laughs> I swear, I was like, yes. And he was like. <laughs> and then of course he made me feel bad and tacky. So I was like, I guess I'm going to get no coach bag. And then one day I went to his house. And I forgot what we were doing. And I just happened to look in the corner. And I saw a coach bag. I said, you black bitch. <laughs> girl. I said, girl, you talked all that mess and turned your nose up at me 
because I wanted a coach bag, and I look over, I come to your house, knuckle, and I see a whole coach bag sitting in the corner. Oh, oh, brother, that's not mine. That's not. That's that, he said that was his friend. He was like, but now that I thought about it, coach ain't that bad. <laughs> okay, so now you probably fucking a nigga. <laughs> he got a coach bag, and now all of a sudden, girl, it's not that bad because the nigga you fucking probably got a coach bag. <laughs> okay, girl. But when I said I wanted a coach bag, girl, it was tacky and it was a mess, and it was nineteen ninety nine, girl. Right, it was it was it was nineteen ninety six, girl. It was nineteen ninety two. Y'all better stop sleeping on Coach. Coach is cute, but I can definitely see how this is um how how Coach could say that this is copyright infringement because it it does look like a Coach shirt. I would think it was Coach. I definitely would. Baby, did y'all hear about this? This is what I'm talking about, girl. This is why, this is exactly why I, you know, some of y'all may not know this, but I am like, not terrified of flying, but not terrified. Like, I'm not passing out or like doing, none of any, doing any of that, you know, on a plane. But girl, I, I just get real nervous. <laughs> girl, I just get real nervous. When I'm flying, like girl, I can barely. When I say I can barely make it to DC or New York, girl, girl, Atlanta, girl, girl, I'd be like, girl, no. I think what it is is because I don't have any control and I don't know who this is driving me, girl. And we in the air, girl, I don't know who this man or this woman is. Most of the time, it's a man, right? Um, did I say my last flight? What did I? I was. What did I go? I had a black. Um, a black woman flight attendant. I said, oh, girl, I, was, I wanted to take a picture with her, girl. I was like, oh, my God, girl. I had never seen a black female flight attendant ever. Um, so shout out to her. Um, but anyways, yeah, fly, flying just, like, makes my nerves bad. And this doesn't do anything to help it. Um, a Southwest, is it Boeing 737? Is it Boeing 737 lost engine cover during takeoff? F FAA is investigating. Basically, the key point is um, a Southwest Airlines flight returned to Denver International Airport after losing an engine cowling that struck a wing flap during takeoff, the Federal Aviation Administration said. Um, customers on the flight were put on another plane and were scheduled to arrive uh, at their Houston destina destination three hours late. Um, mechanical problems have added to FAA scrutiny of the aviation industry in recent months. This is a mess. <laughs> this is a mess. I'm gonna. Um, I'm not playing the video in my video, but I'll definitely put the link so you can see the video of the airplane. But I tell y'all, these I don't know who. I'm, <laughs> I don't know who making these planes. But baby, it almost seemed like they just making these planes with Elmer's glue and some fall paper. <laughs> At the, girl, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they halfway drunk. I really do believe this, and I don't want anybody to be without a job. But it's, I know I understand mistakes happen, and I'm not saying that you should lose your job over every mistake. But when it comes to folks' safety, and I may be saying this because I'm not the most comfortable when flying, but things like this, you should be automatic. I need to know what happened. Is it just the plane that's old, right? Or did somebody make a mistake? Because like we we've heard we've this is not the first. This is not the first time that this has happened with this type of plane. We've had incidents with um, United, right? Now we have one with Southwest. Girl, we're gonna look up, girl. The top of the plane gonna be <laughs> the top of the plane gonna fly off next week, and girl, everybody gonna be hollering, girl. They're gonna be dead. Cause I mean, girl, at, at this point, it's like, girl, you you might as well just drive to where you going. You have a better chance then? Well, they, I know it's not. They say it's, you have more of a chance of getting in a wreck on the ground versus the air. But still, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. Like, what are y'all doing when y'all building these planes or, or, or going back to, like, maintenance the planes? Like, what are y'all doing? I want to know. Like, when, 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 like, when, <laughs> like girl... Because we know y'all ain't cleaning the inside of the planes out with the cleaning crew. We know that. <laughs> yeah. So the people who are supposed to go check on the planes, like, what are y'all doing? Because, girl, every time I look up, girl, y'all planes is falling apart. 
I think at some point. At some point, girl, somebody got to start answering. Somebody got to lose a job. Maybe, maybe there's nothing that the person could have done to realize that this would happen. Okay. But what if they said something like, I don't know, I'm just going to make up something. What if they said something like, oh, you, the reason why this happened is because Jim, Jim he forgot to do this. <laughs> girl, uh-uh, get her out of here. Jim got to go. She forgot. Not, oh, they did everything that they were supposed to do and they double checked and this still happened. But if it's some if it's some shit like, oh, somebody just forgot to do a step, okay, that's why these plays falling apart, I think that should be unemployed. Girl, you cannot be playing with people on planes like that. Mm-mm. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't care what nobody got to say. Oop, I don't I don't care what nobody got to say. I don't like it. Get them up out of here. Mm-mm. Anyways, what else is going on? Shout out to um shout out to everybody um on that plane. I'm glad everybody made it home safely. That would have been a mess if they didn't though, huh? A hot mess. What are they talking about? Y'all agree, Charlemagne? Oh girl. Let me li listen to listen to what they got to say. Hold up. No one's walking in that door. He could bring anything in that door. Yeah, but I mean, what, what the fuck is this? That's what I'm talking about. They they back him out. This is the raid. This is the yes, raid. Yes, bro. They arresting whites. They was arresting whites. This is too much. This is, it is too much. Like, unless they know something that we don't fucking know. Thank you. Oh, you know, girl. How much the internet? Unless they know something that we don't know. Let me say something. I've said this. I'm gonna say it again. I don't know why in the hell people think that the Homeland Security wouldn't know something that we don't know. What makes Charlemagne think is no shade in the people who think like Charlemagne that you would know the same information that home, I'm trying not to yell because it's late, Homeland Security knows. Why would you think you would know what the fuck they know? Girl, why? Girl, why would you, Charlemagne the God, think that you would know the same information that Homeland Security does. Why would you think that? Unless they know something we don't know. Oh, uh, you think? Girl, you think? I think sometimes we get so caught up into thinking that we know everything, and if there is not a source, then if there ain't no source came out, then I mean it's not true. We only know what we know. <laughs> Homeland Security knows what they know, and they probably know triple more than what we know. And then you have the girls and boys like Misa, Hilton, and Boomcack, Lori Ann, and the bad boy Rasta, and all of the other boys and girls who partied and hung out and, you know, played with Diddy, who know probably more than what Homeland Security knows. That's the real tea. Right? Missy Elliott, all of the girls and the boys, right, in the music industry, they know the real, 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 real thing. Plays into this type of shit. I wonder if, you know, these people are online and watching these YouTube videos and buying into these conspiracy theories mm. and they're getting phone calls and anonymous tips and probably a bunch of anonymous tips because of what the internet is fueling. I wonder if that's causing people to, you know, to react like this. Because this is crazy, bro. <laughs> he said Homeland Security watching YouTube videos. <laughs> hey, girl! He said Homeland Security watching YouTube videos and that's why they act in the way they act, <laughs> girl. They watching YouTube videos. They watching, they watching Rodney the voice, and he got the people worked up. And because Rodney said, girl, the nigga probably guilty, they hopped in some talker trucks. Girl, they hopped in some talker trucks, grabbed all they, grabbed all they guns, knives, and machetes. Girl, put on girl, helmets and bulletproof vests. And girl, they used all the taxpayers' money to go down there and have people go down to Miami. They had people go to Los Angeles and even New York because all they doing is sitting their asses in front of the YouTube, watching the YouTube was talk shit. I only want to listen to this some more because they sound dumb. I get everybody has their... It, it, listen, we all can be conspiracy theorists sometimes. We all have our conspiracy theories. It is what it is, right? But I think that sometimes, girl, when we start to go down this hole of like, <laughs> I don't know, 
just Charlemagne sounds dumb. You just said the Homeland Security. How many YouTube videos have they watched? Girl, what are you talking about? <laughs> All they doing, all they doing is watching them YouTubers <laughs> getting them getting getting them all excited. Girl, this shit ain't real. <laughs> they just messing them, they just watching them messy ass YouTubers. Girl. What they know that we don't know. A lot, Nuka. Girl, you better hope they don't come knock on your door, Charlemagne. Anyways, child. He's a fool. I used to love Mr. Charlemagne. Every time I think that Charlemagne got some sense, it's like, girl, you know, like when you think you take to when you and I think when I think that Charlemagne is taking two steps forward, he takes like twenty steps back. <sighs> I do a, a part of me does think Char Charlemagne is a fraud. I do, and what I mean by fraud, I mean by I think that Charlemagne was one of those people who hopped on a. Remember when he used to always talk about mental health and mental health and mental health? I just think he did that because at the time. Um, especially like within the black community, we never really had conversations about mental health. And then once people started kind of having those conversations, I felt like he saw, ooh, this is my time to jump in and hop on the mental health bandwagon, right? But I really don't think that he really meant what he said, right? I don't think that when he tries to act like he's as, he's at, is as advanced and he's grown, and he's probably read a half of a book, right? But he'll make it seem as though I've been reading, I've been doing the work, but you really don't, but you really haven't, right? I just think it was kind of like a stunt in a show because every time he opens up his mouth, he shows that he is still that old Charlemagne from back in the day. <laughs> Not necessarily as ignorant and as in your face, but just a little bit more polished. That's what I think. Anyways, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good day. Bye, y'all.